I'm Jesse Burst uh, from Smart Grid News. I'm your host today. Smart Grid News is the Internet's oldest, largest, and highest ranked smart grid site. We're very glad you're here uh, at one of our Lessons from the Real World webinars. We're very pleased to be able to bring you this important topic because it's one that's easy to overlook and it's, it's dangerous if you do. And what we're going to be talking about today is the difference between pilot projects and deployment scale. A lot of issues don't show up when there's just a few thousand users, but you move to a few hundred thousand or a few million, and suddenly things show up, become major issues, and can even force a, a reset of your project. So here's our uh, presenters today. I'm Jesse Burst. Also with us, uh, Dr. David Shipman from IBM's Energy and Utilities Practice. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you. And uh, joining us as well, Richard Wozniak from IBM Software Group. Thanks for being here, Richard. Thank you, Jesse. We're lucky to have these two experts here with us. I will introduce them in more detail when it's uh, their turn to speak. Uh, but it's just probably a good time to say thank you to both of them and to IBM for lending their expertise and their experience. And here's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk first, we're going to orient you with some remarks about meter data management. Then we're going to talk about some of these overlooked data issues. You can have problems with just getting the data in. You can have problems analyzing it and getting business value out. You can even have excess cost in storing it. We'll talk about that. I'll talk a little bit about time series data and some points you need to understand about that. And got a couple of, I think, very interesting case studies that you'll learn from as well. So let's bring up Dr. David Shipman. He's uh, part of the IBM Energy and Utilities practice. He's been doing this for over two decades. A lot of experience with utility solutions for asset management, for regulatory compliance, mobile workforce management, and lots of other important uh, topics. And we're lucky to have him here uh, today. Uh, David, would you kick us off? All right, so smart meters are really just a component of much larger smart grid solutions. Uh, the world's in the process of going from old analog networks to very sophisticated and digitally controlled networks. Utilities are one of the last major industries to fully deploy digital technology. The old networks have done remarkably well for decades, but the potential benefits of a digitally controlled network means the time has come to make the switch. Smart grids that include instrumented networks and substations have the great potential to enable self-healing grids, distributed generation, and are a central component for smarter cities. Digital instrumentation and control of the grid opens up many opportunities to improve the way power is generated, distributed, and consumed. Smart meters are by far the most visible piece of the smart grid. Since they end up literally in our backyards, they've received a lot of attention in the popular press. Hence, there are a number of non-technical issues that arise as smart meters are installed in neighborhoods. Each utility has a different roadmap for deploying components of the smart grid, but generally they have a vision of a fully instrumented, digitally managed grid with smart meters and the data that they generate as a key component. The information generated by smart meters will allow utility companies to have greater insight into how electricity is used, how consumer behave, and how consumer behavior can be analyzed to benefit us all. Since these projects are massive in scope, most utilities start with small pilot projects before they roll out their entire customer base. It's during this initial pilot project that companies learn a lot about both the technology and the way customers react to smart meters. Estimates put the number of smart meters planned to be deployed by the year 2015 at over 450 million worldwide. So what's driving these projects? Well, in many parts of the world, it's government stimulus funding, four and a half billion in the U.S. since 2009. Growth markets uh, such as China are planning major projects as well. By deploying smart meters and building an intelligent utility network, energy companies can implement centralized monitoring and analysis to improve operations offer highly customized, flexible commercial service packages and pricing options to include time of use pricing, increase service reliability, improve fraud and loss management and accelerate revenue connection, enhance customer service, reduce overall meter to cash cost by 50% by eliminating errors and late or inaccurate bills, benefit from advanced features like load profiling to provide competitive differentiation, increase customer retention, and promote conservation. It's still early days in these major projects, and we're learning from the experiences that have happened already. It's important to examine these projects that are being rolled out and learn the lessons from these projects and not make the same mistakes again. It's also interesting to understand what goals are for smart meter projects around the world. 
North America, Europe, and Australia, New Zealand, projects are focused on demand response programs and enabling distributed renewables as part of a larger network. The next step for many projects will be to enable home area networks with smarter devices that we can, can be controlled like any other IP addressable device. In emerging markets, the issues are often more around spreading access to electricity and the grid operations that support that. Also, many parts of the world are still struggling with reliability of service and are hoping to improve that to benefit the local industry. As these projects are deployed, a number of unanticipated issues have surfaced. The local press is quick to jump on these problems, and often the result is to delay and complicate the ability to execute on smart meter projects. There have been major issues around privacy and data security. A number of groups have objected to what they perceive as unwanted intrusion into their personal matters by smart meters. There's also the concern that companies or others will be able to determine when people are at home, and a general concern that observing consumption patterns represents too much of an invasion of privacy. People are worried that we will know when they cook, when they bathe, and what kind of plants they have in the house. In some cases in California, consumers have been given the right to opt out of smart meter systems, but so far it's at a rather steep price. Opponents have also raised issues around safety and health, claiming that the signals used to send smart meter data back to the utility company are interfering with their health. Many of these same arguments were raised about the use of cell phones and their effect on health. While difficult to either prove or refute, these issues have become significant and must be dealt with. Another area of concern is who will pay for the smart meter installations. One argument is that the benefits of automatic meter reading, i.e. the elimination of meter readers on the streets, will accrue to the utility company and not the consumer. So they're saving money by elimination of labor, and so they should pay the entire cost of the smart meter systems and the infrastructure to support them, and if anything, lower their rates. Utility companies counter this by pointing out that of all the other benefits that the consumers can or will receive. These include the ability of the consumer to better manage usage and potential lower what they pay for electricity while eliminating the need to build costly new power plants. There is a promise of better outage management, both prevention and restoration. Customers will see fewer and shorter power outages as a result. Ability to quickly connect customers that sign up for electric service without rolling a truck to the customer's premises while the customer is waiting. If you've just moved into a new location or waiting for power to be turned on, this is certainly a great value. Also, the ability to quickly correct a misread meter. I know just a few months before they installed a smart meter at my house, I had a bill that was about 10 times the normal. After investigation, I determined that the meter had been misread by the human meter reader. Since he wouldn't be around again for another month, this error wouldn't be caught until then. I was able to read the meter myself and phone the customer service rep to correct it and have a new bill prepared. But how much easier it would be if 15 minutes later the misread was corrected when the next reading was taken and the erroneous bill never issued. Also, the ability to improve the way utility companies communicate with their customers when issues do arise. I think we'd all be happy to receive a message from the utility company when our power goes out informing us what to expect as far as power outage duration and so we can plan accordingly. Even more transforming will be the ability to be notified when a family member, such as an invalid parent, has power problems so that we can take action to ensure their safety and security. Another area of concern, of course, is the accuracy of the meter reading. There's an example in Central California where most of the electric bills went up after the smart meters were installed. Of course, the utility customers all complained about being ripped off by the new and accurate meters. While it was true that the bills went up, on further examination, it turns out the problem was most of the old analog meters were not accurate at all and were under-reporting electric usage for most customers. I'm sure that didn't make any of them feel better that they were underpaying, but I haven't seen any validated cases where meter readings were less accurate with smart meters. As systems have been expanded, going from small pilots to large installations, many technical problems have been identified, especially in the data area. What works for a 1,000-meter pilot may not work for 4 million meters. Simple math says that going from one reading a month to a reading every 15 minutes generates 3,000 times more data. That's a huge data growth problem, not only the collecting and loading of the data, but then the ability to do meaningful analysis on that data. It is precisely that data mining capability that is the cornerstone of making utility companies and smart grids smarter. Storage and retention becomes real issues. Many regulators require that utility companies and, and or their RTOs retain customer usage information for extended periods of time, often in excess of five years' worth of data. When you start loading and storing thousands of readings from millions of customers, issues arise that weren't anticipated in the original plan. We're seeing that when smart meter project passes a million customer mark, that many problems are jumping up and causing them to rethink the way they deal with all that information. Just throwing more storage and CPU power at the problem is not an effective or efficient way to deal with the issues. 
There are real savings to be made by having an intelligent process for acquiring, loading, storing, analyzing, and manage all that data. And that's important since many instances these costs cannot be passed on to the consumers. Some things to think about include the loading of all that data as it's collected. Loading times can easily get out of hand to the point that all the data can't be loaded into the company's computers. Data storage can also be an issue too. When you combine the sheer volume of data with extended retention times, the cost of storage can present a serious problem. The consideration here is how much of that archive information needs to be online and how much can be moved offline. Finally, the nature of the analysis you want to do with the information will establish what types of data warehousing and analytics will be needed. 